Hello, welcome to the video. Today we're gonna be having some fun with the November Art Snacks Plus box. Open it up, find out what's inside, and then make some art with it. So it looks like we got some kind of paint. Gotta love the little bubble wrap bags. Oh, these are two different things. This one is the Liquitex Professional Soft Body Acrylic Ultramarine Blue Green Shade. Then you have your little technical specs. Why is there so much lid? Look at this ratio. Oh, there's a little hole in it. Wait, is it like a pump? Doesn't feel like much. Show me the pigment. Wozers. Look at that shiny, shiny paint goodness. This is some Liquitex Professional Flow Aid because this is going to make your acrylic paints more watery. Here we have the two menus. This one is for the Art Snacks Plus box, and this one's for the regular Art Snacks box. We have the snack. Okay, I gotta admit. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a palette knife. Literally, like a week ago, I got my first palette knife. Wow, they look eerily similar. You know, except for the blade. The width is nearly full tang of the blade. Nope. Anyway, definitely need to get in the habit of using these things to mix my paint. Probably uh, prolong the life of expectancy of some of my brushes. <laughs> All right, now the little goodies, usually my favorite part. Oh, geez, I am doing wonders on this tissue paper. All right, we got the Art Snacks sticker. Kind of reminds me of like a Thanksgiving sweater pattern. <laughs> oh, wait, now I'm looking at it. It's actually a bunch of little leaves. That's cute. Also in there, we have a Faber-Castell eco pigment in the size 0.7 does it draw in red i wonder oh it does what makes it an eco pigment it's actually made out of unused automobile plastic unused do they mean reused or like it was meant to be an automobile and then they're like now nah, we're not gonna make that here make a pen <laughs> that's unclear anyway though <laughs> i'll have to swatch that one the zebra brush pen Glittery? I can't tell. <gasps> Metallic! I don't know if you can see that, but look at the shiny shimmer. It matches my nails, actually. How funny. And finally, a nice little paintbrush, the flat shader, Princeton Velvet Touch. Enjoy that while it lasts. It will not always look that pure. And finally, we have the paper. Oh yeah, it is paper. I, was, I thought it might be like a block. The white, white drawing paper. Ooh, that stuff's thick. That has a nice deep sound. I've yet to figure out why this has such a lid. Maybe it's just to make it more ergonomic and easy to unscrew. <gasps> ah! I mean, I knew something was up. Very handy. You could probably even try drawing with this. Now I've learned my lesson and we're gonna use the type of paper that we plan on making the final illustration with. First watching, we have the pigment pen and the brush pen and get some variety in the lines. Those are two pens and we have a paintbrush. It looks like the three things that came in the plus were the knife, the flow aid, and then the paper. Try some of the paint without any flow aid. The flow aid is supposed to add to transparency and also make brush strokes a little less visible. See what happens if we just brush right over that with the knife. Ooh intriguing definitely learning to use this as like a tool not only for mixing paint which i need to remember to do but also for actually like trying to make art with it oh it's kind of like puttying a ceiling so those are the three colors we have i don't know what i'm gonna do with these definitely gonna have to take advantage of the white paper and use that for contrast because uh, we don't have white paint to mix with the blue paint to get different shades. Then also I need to go follow this recipe. <laughs> One part flow aid to 20 parts of water and then add up to 25% of diluted flow aid to your acrylic paint. Okay. Mix that all up. Much science. Okay, and then you can add this to the paint. I guess we could go the paper plate route. <laughs> I appreciate this nozzle. It's cute. Sorry for making fun of you before. Now, how do I add this to that? I'm just gonna drop it. Here we go. Don't want too much. Only up to 25%. Ooh, how weird. Is that what it's supposed to do? Okay, it's it's becoming a little bit more even and less crusty. It looks a little bit like jello before it hardens. <laughs> 
Let's try it with a paintbrush. I don't know if I like that better. We'll have to see when that would be useful. I'm a little stumped. How am I going to use these together? You know what? This would work really well for this sort of thing. I just feel like my colors are so random. <laughs> Let me try. I'm going to grab a pencil. Um, I'm going to outline a character here. I'm going to start with just a portrait because I want to see if this like idea actually works. Quickly sketch that in. And we gotta do the eyes because that's my favorite part. Fun eyebrows and some pupils would probably be nice. Just a little bit of hair and then you can try doing something with the paints and like obviously the other ones too. <laughs> I think a mistake a lot of people make when they're drawing hair is they forget foreheads. I know I do. Especially when you're doing like short hair. Show a little love to some foreheads. <laughs> Everybody had one. Earrings. I never draw enough earrings. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what we're drawing. The point is we want to try out something here. I'm going to start with straight acrylic. Fill in around the character. Block them out. Try not to go inside the lines like I just did. And then mix in a little bit of our flowed version. Kind of help mix the entire thing. Anywhere where I'm seeing too many strokes. That's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> It might be a double layer thing, going to make it a little bit more transparent, which is going to, in effect, get look less fully covered. So multiple layers might be the trick. I'm going to also paint over her shirt with this. I think the hope for this idea would be to have fun monochromatic illustration. Go on another layer. Oh yeah, look at that second layer action. Okay, let that dry a little. Let's take some of that and go over these areas. I'm gonna just test it and see how much coverage I can get. Right now I'm still seeing some streaks. I don't think I waited for that to dry enough. Whoops. Kind of thinking about grabbing some white acrylic paint though. All I have is cheap stuff. Mixing it with my Liquitex kind of feels like a crime. I'll just get some out and if I happen to use it, I happen to use it, you know. No big deal. I mean, I just want to test this palette knife and see if it mixes well, right? <laughs> And I have to use this paint before it dries because acrylic paint dries so fast. Might as well, you know, put it on the drawing someplace. And the hair seems like as good a place as any. Mix in a little bit of add it to the darker areas. Yeah, add a little uh, shading to the face. Can't hurt, right? Darken up the cheeks. Blend that out a little. Okay, I'm going a little bit more uh, crazy on this than I anticipated. It is drying pretty fast, but I need to figure out how to use some of these other supplies with it, obviously. I can't just get away with using half of my own art supplies, right? <laughs> All right, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like I haven't been saying anything. I've just been like, ooh. <laughs> what is it called? It's just Flowade, fluid medium. Okay, the fluid medium is really changing how I do acrylic paints. I feel like it gives you a lot more time to like blend out your colors. And I like the transparent effect it gives when you're layering. It's actually really cool. I am impressed. So that's acrylic paint. <laughs> anyway, we should probably use some of these other supplies. I want to use definitely metallic brush pen. Jewelry is like the basic way to use it, but I definitely want to use way more than that. I had a necklace, but I think this is still wet. So can I wait like two more minutes? Probably. Well, I wait. Just go with the starburst shape coming from behind them. Random. Just add little specks and polka dots too while we're at it for a little extra sheen. Well, the other thing we haven't used is this, the red pen, which I feel like is what gets us in a strange place regarding uh, our hues and our color scheme. But I'm just going to go over it and see what happens. I'm hoping it'll blend a little and look purple, but I'm not seeing that. It actually doesn't look that bad. I kind of like it. Let me do the whole thing first, though, <laughs> and then we'll know like the pop of color because the rest is so um the rest of the colors are so analogous that i think this pop of red actually work i think that has a lot to do with me adding white to the mixture and adding more tones of blue which also helps sell it wow i am surprised how well that works it makes me excited to move on to another piece of paper i didn't wait for it to fully dry so i can't really add the liner in certain places oh no it added bumpiness to the rest Oh no, oh no. I thought this was more like a pad. 
proper mixed media. <gasps> I was wrong. I think I destroyed it, but <laughs> that's just what we do here. Something must have like actually made it through the paper. Oh, I love that shine. Ooh, shimmer, shimmer. This time I'm going to remove the paper. Move this out of the way to protect what I can. What hasn't been destroyed. I'll grab some masking tape and tape this guy down and hopefully that'll stop it from wibbly wobbling. It's already got a little bit of a wobble in it so this might not work perfectly but it should improve and avoid any future problems. So hopefully we'll have a really cool border when we remove this. I didn't make that straight. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't bother me but I know it's gonna bother somebody. Yeah we'll hide it. It's just a little bit of artistic chaos. I mean, yeah, it's not straight, but let's go deal with it. All right, I love the portrait. I do have a smaller paintbrush that I was using to get those details. So I don't think I have to do a portrait because it worked pretty well and I drew pretty small, but I'm probably gonna draw a portrait. Let's be honest. I'm gonna try and add a little bit more flow to it though, instead of it just being a portrait that looks like a bit of a student ID with a little extra pizzazz. This time I want it to have like some flow to it. So let me just get everything out of the way here. <laughs> really, really go to town. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I said I wanted to have more flow and I'm just going ahead and drawing in the head. That's the easiest way to make your art look real stiff. Okay, face. Neck, shoulders maybe like hunched up a little bit. Like they're laughing. Ears, find the orientation of the face. This would be funny if I keep with a happy theme, but I'm drawing in blue. It's kind of like a contradiction because like blue is considered like a sad melancholy color. But here we're drawing a very happy character. Kind of like that juxtaposition. Figure out how big I want the eyes to be. Let's see, for clothes and hair, what do we want to do? More importantly, what do I want to do? <laughs> Since the decision rests on my shoulders, this looks a little discombobulated. Let's see, measure this out a little bit better. I want to include a hand here, but I did not leave room for that. Unless I just like throw one up like, like they're laughing at a joke. I could include the hand, but it's a, it's a little goofy, but I kind of want to paint a hand. I'm going to make it a little bigger though, because look how big the head is to the hand ratio. Whereas if you take your hand and you kind of like stick it over your face, it's a little bit similar in size to the face. So that's technically how big the hand should be. If we were trying to be accurate. How do you... Oh, you. What does that even look like? Oh, you. Wait, it's the other hand. Oh, you. <laughs> what does that look? Ooh, hey. A little reference. And the thumb is actually like coming out this way. And... <gasps> oh, we got a hand. We got a hand. The very beginnings of a hand. I kind of stylize the ears a little bit more than I usually do. I do like that. It's kind of cool. I like just pointed off some of the edges. Got to keep that earring theme going. Inspired by that metallic brush pen. <laughs> the sketch is going really, really well. I'm a little nervous about um, adding color. <laughs> but that's a good sign. Since I'm heading in the right direction. And I may or may not have forgotten that I'm coloring this with paint. And you're not going to see the sketch. I'll give her one of those like really short bangs, haircuts, and then the curls. Kind of block out where I want it to be more shaded. Again, including a forehead to give my character a little bit more uh, space for the brain. I don't know. <laughs> I used to draw characters like with no forehead and like I was always like, why does the face look weird? It's because the hair is just coming out of the top of their eyebrows, you know? You need, to, you need a little space there. We have brain cavities, you know? <laughs> I'm picturing this hair being like neon green, but that's not a color we have. Let me just figure out where the eyebrows are one last time. And then I'm gonna start going in with the paint. Ah! 
not entirely sure what's lip and what's teeth, but I think we'll figure it out along the way, you know? Had a little bit of uh, adventure. <laughs> I'm just gonna add a really simple t-shirt because I didn't put thought into this. What she was actually going to be wearing. Hoot, 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 paint, paint. I think I'm gonna start without any, oops, no, not like that. I'm gonna start without any of the fluid medium and just color in the background with solid ultramarine blue. Do you, do you stir in the top left so I don't put my wrist in it? Again, we're probably gonna need a couple coats. So let me just quickly try and color this in. Try and be very thin with it, like I'm painting a wall. Really get up to the edges so I don't end up with all that white space like I did with the thumbnail. Color in between these fingies. Try and get right on top of the pencil sketch if I can. Is this dry already? Jeesh. Okay, next layer. Forgot how fast acrylic paint dries. What? And that's also what thin layers will do for you. The older I get, the more I enjoy painting. <laughs> it's really starting to kind of like mesh with my art style a little better. It doesn't quite feel like a fight as much as it is a, a dance. There we go. We slowly learn what works, what doesn't. And you're not stepping on people's feet anymore. <laughs> so we're gonna mix a white and a blue. Lots of white, a little bit of blue, at least the first layer of it. I expect we're going to be doing some shading afterwards, but we have to block out all the colors. This will probably need a couple layers too. Oh, I probably should have colored. Well, we'll go over that spot a lot. <laughs> the bangs, because I'm going to want to color in skin underneath that. Yeah, you know, it's a process. <laughs> I am slowly, slowly learning. <gasps> when did this happen? Luckily these are paints and you like can build any color on top of anything, but yay! I didn't realize that was even happening. Add a little bit more blue to this to darken it up when I get close to this edge. Turn some eyebrows too, I suppose. Doesn't really matter when. I might end up going over these with the skin tone because I'm pretty lazy when I color in skin. I kind of just want to go over everything. <laughs> Although no, I don't want to really lose where the eyebrows are because I put a lot of time and effort into figuring that out. All right. I think the skin might be the next thing I want to color. So yeah, let's add even more white to this mixture. White. Start light and then we're going to add probably some of this mid-tone if it's not completely dry for like blush and stuff, which will darken up the face. And then go on in. Get right up on the edge, try to... Eliminate as much pencil as possible in this first layer. Thank goodness for opaque paint, right? <laughs> I'm gonna mix a little bit in to mark where that line was above the eyelid, which will probably end up getting blended out. First layer of blush. It's always gonna look so crazy. <laughs> getting used to that. Doesn't she look crazy? <laughs> Luckily, I am not close to being done yet. <laughs> or I'd be nervous. I'll lighten it up above here because more light would probably be hitting this part of the hand. Let that dry while I figure out what to do next. I think I need to switch to a smaller paintbrush after I paint in the background. Go right up along the edge there. A couple layers of this. Alright, switch to the smaller paintbrush, methinks. Clean this one off. All right, and then I want to work on blending out the face. So we're going to need some more paint. Oh, I just grabbed the bigger paintbrush again. Okay, fine. We'll start there. Dip it in a little bit of that medium. Kind of try and blend that out. It's going to make it a little bit more transparent. And this could be a slow process of just blending the different colors. It worked really well in the thumbnail, so I am hopeful that this will turn out as well. Oops, I put way too much paint. Where's the undo button? So I can just like scrape it off a little bit. See if I can reveal what was underneath. Start larger and then blend it out a little bit like I did with the oil paints maybe. Except obviously you gotta work a lot faster. Need a little bit of a darker color on the brush maybe. Can't keep, it, keep leaving this nose hanging, can I? I should figure out what that looks like. I can't really remember what the sketch looked like, but maybe we want it darker on the underside. Kind of like draw a 3D triangle. Hmm. Yeah, I think I see something. Blend out 
the edges. Seems like I want the ears to look like ears too. Ears are something I've just painting them's been tricky. So this time I really like broke it down into shapes. So I'm hoping that helps. I'm gonna actually add some more of that liquid medium. Blowing that one out. Okay, it's taken a little bit more shape here. I'm impressed. The paints. I mean, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Painting monochromatic is definitely helpful because you have to put the paint right where you want it. And if I was doing colors, I'd find this way more difficult. I am lacking a little bit of contrast. I wonder if there's a way to pop that up, bump that up a little. I'm gonna add a transparent layer of that really dark color like that. And then I also wanna use this. So this is that medium mixed acrylic. Kind of darken up behind the hair then try to blend that out. So I'm gonna like dry the brush, well, clean the brush, dry it. Add the fluid medium and then try to blend that. Ooh, hey, it's working. Cause I don't want to get this dark color too close to the rest of the dark color. That is the background. All right, do the same thing on the other side. I mean, you can kind of do that with water and acrylics, but I feel like this, this works a little easier. It doesn't lose as much pigmentation. I was like, I'm kind of like waiting for it to dry and I'll go back to like other bits. I want the fluid medium. And then I uh, kind of like lighten up under these eyes a little. And here a little. Blend some of this out. I know line art will help the nose, but I want to like just try and figure it out myself, you know? <laughs> Got some eyelashes. That always makes me feel better. <laughs> I wish I could rotate the canvas at this point. That'd be helpful. But I'll just have to rotate my body instead. Oh, went a little crazy on the wing there. An eyebrow. She went on his side. I just realized I've not done anything with the mouth either. I think I'm going to start with coloring in the teeth. Because that's going to be white and it's not going to like require a lot of extra effort. But I want that to be dry when I add on the lips on top. I'm gonna grab some white paint. I just color those in to remove like the pencil sketch. It'll probably take a couple layers. Just want to be there to be as minimum pencil sketch as possible. The mouth. This dark, dark blue. All right, and then lips. I think I'll follow the color scheme of that one. And color those in the dark blue too. Do that first layer and just try to cover up the pencil. That'll need a little tweaking. But that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Darken up the ear in a little bit. All right, this is quite the process. Ooh, I like it. Also need to do with this hand. And I guess I'm just leaving the shirt white. Because uh not sure I have a plan. Unless I want to add stripes or something. And then the hands too. Oh yeah, the hands. That was what I was excited about, wasn't it? <laughs> so first I'm going to grab this, add some shadow, grab the lighter color, and add the highlights in. Just slowly figure out the tones. Add more highlights with our lightest blue that we mixed. Luckily nothing's really dried out on me yet because I mixed such large amounts. <laughs> I keep referencing my hand. I'm like, what does it look like? More highlights to the knuckles. <laughs> Every time I look at the reference, I'm like, okay, my knuckles kind of seem obvious. But then after that, I'm like, I don't know. Be blended outwards a little more. Maybe some wrinkles will help. There we go. I think that might be it. I'm going, I'm getting to the point where I'm like over rendering it, which is something I do not want to do because I am not going to over render the face. That's for sure. I'm not interested in that scenario. Been there, done that. Go back to this face. I'm starting to use a lot more of the fluid medium because I want it to be more transparent when I'm blending out things. Add a couple extra highlighty bits to the hair. Give it a little extra something. Could probably even go back here and add some too. 
It's little squiggles, make the hair look a little curlier. And try to blend it out though when it reaches the end there. Make it a little more transparent. <clears throat> okay, anything else? A little more shadow in the knuckles maybe? Ooh, blend it out a little. Oh yeah, there we go. I like that. Okay. Just gonna dry brush, blend out anything that's still wet. There's definitely more to be done, but I'm not sure I'm the one that could do it. <laughs> Let's try on these eyebrows. <laughs> Go in with my metallic brush pen and do the jewelry as I had previously planned. Not sure if you can see that yet, but when I pick it up, it should be pretty obvious. Now the necklace, which I actually never did with this. Wait, here we can practice. Ooh, gotta be careful. It's a little thick for this character. Very thick jewelry. So let me be a little thinner. Use the very tip of the brush. And some kind of charm at the end of it. i move this pupil over a little with some white paint. And while I'm here, cover up some of this pencil that's still there. And add a highlight. Whoop. Oh, it's like it. And maybe some highlights for the cheeks. Even though there's already a pretty big one there. <laughs> Probably outline the character. That might be... Ooh! I didn't even think about it. I just started doing it. I don't really have any regrets. Brush strokes. From where I'm standing, that looks like solid white. <laughs> even next to white. I'll leave it on just this side of the character for now. But we'll probably add a little more. Wouldn't be a painting by me if I didn't add some noise to the background. <laughs> now we can take this red pen and finish this shirt for once. <laughs> Just to make it look separate from the rest of the drawing, I think it'll be a little fun contrast. I actually really like the way the light blue looks next to the red. I'm really glad I added white paint to this. Or I don't know what I would have done. I probably would have done the same thing. It just wouldn't have turned out as well. <laughs> I'm really glad I included a hand. I just really, really wanted to paint one. I don't know when I last tried to paint a hand. But I was literally just trying to draw hands earlier today. <laughs> I'm just going to add liner to the whole thing. I didn't on this one only because it was still wet. But this one is dry. Looks. I mean, I checked to see if it left anything on me. But um, like I'd be able to tell. <laughs> Add some like detail to the hair with this linerty section. This I really want to be able to turn the paper, so I think I'm gonna pick it up. So that means removing <sighs> tapes ripping. Well that's useless. You're ruining the moment. Ooh. I'm getting better at this. Makes me happy. All right, last one. No! What's wrong with this tape? I've never had this problem before. Anything's possible. Here we have my drawing. <laughs> but let's finish it. Oh, what a little line art can do for a nose. <laughs> Go over it with this. I'm just going to make a nice purpley red. Shut the mouth here. Kind of regret that last line, but we'll keep moving on. Woo! I think I'm done. I'm finally seeing it from a different angle. It looks so different. Look at that. I love the way it like shines and it like disappears sometimes, depending on the way the light hits it. <laughs> that is fun. I really like the way the colors actually turned out. I was a little nervous there seeing them like this, like all separate. But once you start putting them together, they actually look kind of cute. I'm quite proud of my slowly improving painterly skills. Ooh. I still want to get like a huge canvas and like really really try to draw something big. Anyway I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me as I dove into the Arts Next Plus box this month and made something with its contents. If you're interested in getting your own Arts Next box I'll have a link in the description where you can check out the two tiers and see which one would work for you. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!